One endorsed by Governor Larry Hogan, the other former President Donald Trump. This morning we talked to the two front runners in Maryland's Republican gubernatorial primary. Hello everyone, I'm Mindy Becerra in for Jason this week. Welcome to 11 TV Hill. Early voting is underway. Recent polls show a tight race between former Commerce Secretary Kelly Schultz and State Delegate Dan Cox in the Republican gubernatorial primary. This morning we'll hear from both candidates on some of the biggest issues this election cycle. We begin with Kelly Schultz. Schultz most recently served in the Hogan administration as Commerce Secretary. We asked her thoughts on issues ranging from inflation to education and crime. Joining us right now is Kelly Schultz. She is a candidate for governor here in Maryland. Thanks for joining us this morning. How are you? I am great. I couldn't be better. It's great to be back with you, Jason. Yeah. Well, let's just jump right in and talk about this race. I think that you've been a part of the Hogan administration for years now. And I guess the curiosity is uh, how will you distinguish yourself uh, from his administration if you end up winning the whole thing? Well, you know, listen, I've been a proud uh, participant and advisor to the governor for the last eight years. And that's something that I care, I hold very true to my heart, um, especially on economic issues. I served as labor secretary for four years and then the commerce secretary for three years. And by the time I left office, Maryland was the most improved state for business in the nation. That was this past January. And we wanna be able to continue on with those types of issues and those types of things that really make a difference for hardworking Marylanders across the state. Because just because we're most improved doesn't mean that we're the best. And we want to be able to make sure that we lower the taxes for our constituents and all Marylanders, those hardworking Marylanders that right now are determining how to pay for gas and groceries at the same time. We're fighting hard for them and we're getting the message out. It, it walk, that, walk me through that for some of these hardworking folks, because, yeah, it is a burden, uh, whether you're at Giant getting your groceries or down at the gas station. Um, what are some things that you think could work? And I know the gas tax holiday is, is uh, people on both sides are very strong opinions. What do you think will work for some folks now? Well, you know, those of us that have had to work paycheck to paycheck, and sometimes they don't make it all the way to the next paycheck, right? I was there. I was that 19 year old uh, college student that dropped out of college to have my first son, got married, had a second son, and we worked everything that we could do in order to be able to make ends meet for our family. I know how difficult it is. We have fought for everything that I have gotten in my children but there's other families that are out there right now doing the same thing. So we have a gas tax holiday uh, uh, prospect. All Governor or uh, Comptroller Francho, Governor Candidate Francho has to do is he can extend the increase in the gas price, the inflation tax that was passed back in 2013, that can be extended past July 1st. And we would really, um, I think, recommend that that happen because of the fact that hardworking Marylanders really are having a tough time, especially during the summer months when they're trying to get their kids wherever they need to get their kids. We have elderly um, parts of our community that are just trying to make sure that they can get to the grocery store and making those really tough decisions. That's our number one priority, making sure that Marylanders have what they need just to get to tomorrow in some days. The opposition will say that if you go with that, that tax holiday, you miss out on some revenue you could have been getting. How do you, how do you weigh the scales on that, the, the revenue for uh, tomorrow versus the uh, price tag or the receipts of today? Yeah, well, so that, that's a very interesting question because our transportation trust fund actually gets the revenues from the gas tax that's there. And right now we're asking for the increase that's going to happen on July 1st to, 1st to be postponed. We're asking that that increase gets postponed into the future. The gas tax revenues will still go into the Transportation Trust Fund, just like they have in the past. But tell me a little bit about the relationship between Annapolis and Baltimore. I think some Baltimore residents might use the word tiring when it comes to, uh, I think, the back and forth that goes on uh, between the two cities. And I I'm curious uh, of how you forge a new relationship uh, if you end up in the governor's office. Well, you know, I have a history with many of these people that work in uh, Baltimore City, that work in Annapolis. I have had a history of success. When I was a member of the legislature, I was elected twice to represent my county in Frederick County. And the most important thing for me was to build those bridges so that we could get successful actions to real problems. Still ahead on 11 TV Hill, from crime to Kerwin, the focus of Kelly Schultz and Dan Cox's respective plans and where the two stand on gun reform measures when our Commitment 2022 coverage continues.
And a difficult solution, I think, in Baltimore and elsewhere, but we'll focus Baltimore just because that's where I'm standing, is when it comes to crime and violence. Uh, I think that there's been a back and forth, the use of Maryland State Police or whether it's funding that comes to the city. And I, I'm curious of, of any ideas you may have so that the headline every day isn't um, the latest violent crime. Yeah, isn't that sad that we live in a time where, you know, crime just continues to increase? I, I feel like we're living in the twilight zone. But, you know, the most important thing in my platform is safety. We talk about safe, steady, and prosperous every single day. Safety is the number one issue because if you don't feel safe, nothing else matters. What's happening in Baltimore City, it, it's offensive to those that don't live in Baltimore City and traumatic for those that do live in Baltimore City because they deserve that opportunity to be able to take their children, to take their grandchildren, to be a part of the community in every way possible. We are going to make sure that we hire more police officers, we give the funding, we can hire hundreds of more police officers. We can make sure that criminals are treated like criminals and police officers are treated like heroes. We can make sure that those repeat violent offenders are actually prosecuted and kept in jail instead of spending a lot of time on how to get them out of jail. And we're gonna increase those penalties and those laws on those that are uh, committing crimes with uh, guns. Tell me about guns. You, since you have brought it up, and we just saw a bipartisan bill uh, in Congress, and that's following some mass shootings that we've had. We've also seen Supreme Court have a few things to say about guns. What do you think, and what needs to be done, do you think, to, one, get illegal guns off the street, but also to end some of the gun violence that we're seeing, not just in Baltimore, but it's starting to, you know, we see it throughout our suburbs as well. Well, first I'll say that I'm, I'm a strong supporter of the Second Amendment, but what we know about what they're introducing in Washington, D.C., Maryland already has all of those laws on the books. So in order to be able to decrease the violence, we have to be able to make sure that we actually look at the laws that are on the books and we treat those repeat violent criminals that are not being uh, prosecuted, they're not being kept in jail, they're back out on no bail or low bail every single day. We have to follow the laws that are there, especially in Baltimore City, to be able to make sure that we get those repeat violent criminals off the street. And I'm a, a product of Baltimore City Public Schools and would love to see some of our older buildings get an update, whether it's with technology or air conditioning or whatever, uh, for some of these uh, schools that may be back to the 50s even. Tell me about where educational funding stands for you, your thoughts on Kerwin, uh, where would we be headed in a Schultz administration? Well, Jason, I am also a product of public, public schools. My children are a product of public schools and my new grandson, I'm sure will be a product uh. of public schools as well. But we have to stay focused and we have to understand that as hard as we fought all of the money, record funding year after year after year, it has not resulted in the best schools for our youngest of people within Maryland. We have to be able to make sure that we are committed to giving every child, regardless of the zip code that they live in, a world-class education. And I am the only candidate that's looking at different ways to be able to do that on either side of the aisle. We have to do things differently because we have to provide competition. If you are a parent and you have a child in a failing school or a school that doesn't have air conditioning, a school that has a 30% literacy rate, you do not want your child to be at that school and you should not be forced to do so. So I am the only candidate that's talking about options, talking about renewing and um, redoing and revising our public charter school laws. Public charter schools work in so many different parts of the country. Washington DC and New York City have choices for parents. They have some of the best charter schools in the nation. And I would say, that if Washington, D.C. and New York City can do it, Maryland can do it. Listen, we have about 30 seconds left, and with each candidate, we'll end up giving them that 30 seconds to uh, be their final thought. So this is yours. Anything you'd like to say to those who are headed to the polls? You know, I, I'm asking for every single Marylander in the Republican primary to vote for Kelly Schultz. I do know that I'm the only Republican candidate that can win in November. I do know that. They're fighting against us. They're afraid of Kelly Schultz being that Republican candidate. I can get it done. I can work with both sides of the aisle. I have success in labor with creating workforce development programs and creating new businesses here in this state. And I want to be able to continue that opportunity to be able to make sure that Maryland is the best state in the nation for our workers, for our businesses, for our families, and for our community.
All right, that's Kelly Schultz, Republican candidate for Maryland governor. Thank you for the time this morning. All right, thank you so much, Jason. Sure. Good to see you. You as well, take care. Next, we hear from state delegate Dan Cox, the issues at the center of his campaign and his proposed solutions should he win the party's nomination.